We're in for a wild night. <laughs> Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to episode 102 of Born to be Wild, a wild exclusive Hearthstone podcast where we have fun hanging out with friends talking about the wild format of Hearthstone and spotlighting members of the wild community. I am your host as always, Nate Wolf. I'm so happy to be here on another beautiful Friday night joining you uh, from Portland, Oregon. And uh, yeah, it's just I'm, I'm excited to be here. Friday's always a great day. And yesterday was a super awesome day. Uh, we are going to talk about it tonight. That was uh our uh, wild Hearthstone theory three craft event is just crazy, crazy um, awesome. Before I get there, uh, joined as always by two of my favorite people. Welcome back, Hydralisk. How are you tonight? I'm doing great. Coming at all you guys from the greater Vancouver area, and coming down off that high from yesterday, it was an absolute blast. I'm so stoked to talk about all the fun that we had, and I'm just excited to be here. Hooray! Hooray! Right. <laughs> and welcome back, of course, uh, my very good friend, Electric Sheep City. How are you today? Meowdy, friend. I'm doing fantastic as well. Just like still, still riding that 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 uh, just positive vibe train from yesterday as well. Uh, so you know, it was so much fun uh, seeing the new cards in action proving and disproving some theories that we crafted uh and of course uh, uh you know a little sneak peek but uh glad i'm very glad that aggro druid will still be a force to be reckoned with so oh, yeah. hooray <laughs> absolutely well, i'm excited to see y'all we did just see each other yesterday and i know we have a lot to talk about so i'm gonna go ahead and dive on in so, for those of you joining us for the first time, welcome aboard. I'm going to briefly explain how the show works. So, we record this podcast live every Friday evening at twitch.tv slash borntobewildhs. And the video version of this podcast is then posted to YouTube shortly thereafter. As well as the audio versions are also distributed to all podcast apps. However you're watching or listening or absorbing via osmosis, this podcast today, thank you. Yes, you. Yay. Thank you all so much for, for being here and for uh, part participating, partaking in this content. Thank you so much uh, to the folks here who are watching live on Twitch. Uh, and thank you also to all of our audio listeners and, and the folks watching on YouTube. Um, uh, before we get started with the show, some brief housekeeping. We like to say a, a quick but very important thank you to Shokunin, uh, who is the executive producer of our show, been a big supporter from from day one, and just uh, can't say how much we uh, appreciate him. It's, uh, incredible. In fact, he's sponsoring one of our giveaways. Uh, has donated a mega bundle for all of you. So uh, thank you so much, Shokunin. And also thank you to the patrons of our show. Um, your support helps make things possible like uh, the artwork that we come up with, the emotes that we use, the website fees and all that stuff. And so uh, really appreciate your help. Um, if you are interested in supporting the show, a couple of ways that you can do that for free. If you leave a uh, follow, like, subscribe on our YouTube content, uh, that helps other people find us, helps with the, um, the Google algorithms. Also, if you... Um, same type of deal if you leave any sort of comments on our podcast, whether it's on um, iTunes, Amazon, Google Google Play, or wherever else, um, that helps people find us, and so we appreciate that. Uh, if you would like to support us monetarily, uh, if you want to leave a subscribe on our Twitch here, um, we've got some pretty awesome emotes that you can use, uh, and if you've got a Amazon Prime, you can sub for free. If you, um, uh, what was I going to say? A little little uh, brain fart here, but we do have some new emotes um, that are added as of this week. They're super cute uh, from our artist, Christina Oe, and uh, there's some for free as well that you can uh, use by dropping a follow, which uh, costs zero money. The last thing, if you're interested in supporting financially, um, we do have a Patreon that you can um, uh, donate to for as little as a dollar a month. Um, and uh, yeah, anyways, uh, finally, if you're interested in act interacting with any of us personally, the best way to do that is to join our Discord. For those of you not familiar, Discord is a free online community. Um, and uh, we have a, a big community there we interact with all the time. 
Um, it uh, we talk about everything, lots of theory crafting with these new cards, lots of wild stuff, lots of uh, just stuff in general, sharing deck lists and, and pictures of our pets and all that other stuff. And so uh, it's super fun. Uh, for those of you watching live, we just posted the uh, the link in the chat for everybody watching later or listening to the audio version. If you head off to our website, which is born to be wild uh, there's links all over the website to all of our stuff. So we've got content everywhere uh primarily youtube but uh, lots of places and uh, we'd love to join you hang out with you and all of that stuff all right anyways uh let us move on to why you're all here tonight we've got a little bit of news to talk about and then um, we'll jump into our main topic so hydra take it away yeah so biggest thing in the news really is that the core set was announced now does that affect us in wild Unfortunately, not really, because we don't have any new cards, right? So it's uh, we got the standard rotation coming up, the new core set. So that's just something that's going to be affecting standard. Though we did have the concern. I know we talked about it for the last year since the last <laughs> core time. set. <laughs> like many, many episodes about what happens to the cards that you know that that they gave us right like are they gonna go away do we have to craft them what's gonna happen well turns out they're not going anywhere like the new dragons and everything so i i guess we just keep them for now hey that's great i was worried about it and you know we saw a lot of back and forth with the devs saying well we're talking about it well we're thinking about it well you know you know, and there was some speculation, right? Are we going to get to keep them? Are they like, we all kind of assumed that they would just go off to legacy. So they wouldn't just disappear, right? Like it doesn't make sense to just delete cards. Yeah. But the question was, do you have to craft them or you're going to like get gifted them? Or would we have the option to like buy them? And so when I yeah. saw the news come out that said like, oh, any cards that aren't returning to the core set are going to go to legacy. Okay. And you'll be able to, um, you know, craft them. I was like, dang it. Uh, but then I saw which ones they were and it's, it's all ones that we already had, mm -hmm. or I should say rather it's, it's no, none of the brand newly created ones. And so when they revamped, like you said, they revamped all the dragons, um, that, that see quite a bit of play or cards like, what is it? Like tail and forward ring or some of those. And I was like, right. I, I would have to craft that probably in gold and i don't want to craft all <laughs> no. that stuff and so we don't I, long story short we don't have to and that's really nice the ones that are leaving are i i mean there's there's a few but it wasn't uh i don't know I, I, it wasn't concerning in the same way as i i guess if you look at it from the perspective of somebody that doesn't have a lot of the cards like does it impact wild all that much so i don't really think so um, I don't have the list in front of me, uh, unfortunately, of what rotated and what didn't. I mean, we have it all anyway, right? Like, there is a link, uh, and I it's in the show notes, and I'll post it in chat if anybody wants to check out. Actually, it's really cool. Um, the the Hearthstone team did a bunch of infographics uh, for which cards are staying and which ones are going, mm -hmm. and uh the graphics are awesome their graphic designer did a great job and it's very easy to see what's staying and what's going and i don't think it's anything that's going to impact us all that much um or for those of us in wild like we have the we have access to the cards i should say regardless right because we can use anything that's in legacy in wild um but if you don't have it like it got gifted to you and now it's getting taken away like do you have to craft a bunch of stuff i don't think so i, I there wasn't anything that I saw that like that really like triggered uh uh you know a, a brain response to go like yeah, yeah yeah I think now we almost have to wait an entire other year to find <laughs> out what happens to them right like because if they're just keeping them in core like the dragons and whatnot I guess we just still don't know yeah yeah well I guess we'll see I mean. I imagine at some point, I, I mean, my thought process, and they've been okay uh, lately, that, um, you know, well, with, I should say with the option last time when the mini set came out, it's like, all right, well, you can buy it with money. You can buy it with gold. Hey, we're going to make a golden one available that you can buy if you want. Um, and uh, so I have to think that if they took all these brand new cards 
and uh, pulled them back into Legacy, giving us the option to purchase them instead of just open them in packs or craft them would be awesome. Uh, I think it's a decision that they're not going to have to make for almost a year from now. And so that's nice. And I think we just maybe let it go for now and see. Uh, something interesting to note if we're talking about core set rotation. Number one, uh, we have been honored not once this week, but twice as they named the uh, new year after our good friend Hydra over here. Year of the <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. It's my year. <laughs> hey, that's awesome. I'm there there is do you see on this on this graphic we see the griffith and over here and then after it there's a couple of little doodads there's like year of the velociraptor in like two years from now uh it's probably oh. it's probably not real but like <laughs> anyways well, and in the very first one they had like year of the unicorn right after and and so everyone thought that year of the unicorn was coming up and that proved not to be the case you know you know that was not not the very second year but it it does seem like it's in in the mix just like year of the raptor is hey. wasn't um joss plays waiting for year of the unicorn since you know the beginning of the years that's hilarious <laughs> she's very exuberant about she it and was... i really hope that, that we get it for her and for the rest of us i mean year of the year unicorn would be straight up magical <laughs> that's it wonderful. would wouldn't it <laughs> anyways uh for our standard friends i think it's interesting that of the cards again i don't think we need to cover it all that much on this show because um it really doesn't impact wild but the entire league of explorers is is rotating to standard as part of the core set so reno jackson elise starseeker um sir finley and uh bran bran bronzebeard are mm-hmm. going to be in standard for the next year, which is really interesting. One of the things that we had predicted on our bingo card was Highlander support, so it's kind of hilarious to see Reno Jackson uh, revert to uh, <laughs> standard. That being said, in this set, unless I totally missed something, which I don't think happened, like I didn't see any Highlander support. You know, no. essentially, like if your deck has no duplicates, then. Uh, mm yet but Maybe next time there i mean knowing that these cards rotated to standard uh it, it makes me wonder if like they'll print some stuff either in the mini set or in the next expansion i don't know they they have to because like raza came out like way later right like mean streets or something like so raza and reno were together for a very limited amount of time. So I could see them throwing some stuff in later as we go. Yeah. And you know what? So when, when we record the podcast, very often we don't interact with chat a whole lot, but I want to give shout out to um, H plus T who had a really good point here. Uh, it's a slightly lower barrier of entry into wild because of the core set, which I totally agree with. And so if we want more people to play wild, having access to some of these cards that are like, at least, at least Bran and Reno, uh, I think are are basically staples, and so yeah. and so, uh, yeah. the more people that have access to these seems like a good thing to me. So, anyways, That's very a cool. Really good point. That's a really good point. I had not thought of that. Yeah, and, and with especially with um, Reno and and Bran, but but Reno in particular, we have so much Highlander support. And Reno is one of the things that gives it such, you know, sustain in order to actually get there. Mm-hmm. So kind of letting people dip their toes into wild with, with Reno and have that kind of foundation. I, I think that's fantastic. Oh, yeah. Wild support. Hey. I mean, maybe they just want people to get golden Lotheb. Hey, there we go. Well, hey, <laughs> this is a I mean, good... sorry, diamond Lotheb. Diamond Lotheb. <laughs> there is a, a, a two patches, actually that came out today hot hot fixes sorry nate you can't run two patches (laughs) yeah he's a legendary Uh (laughs) (laughs) we don't don't need those thinking patches all right so (laughs) so there was two hot patches that came hot fixes that came out earlier today that fix a couple of bugs hot patches that's a different thing um (laughs) 
<laughs> Cosplay hot patches. <laughs> 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 I'm just gonna Nate, Nate, Nate. I think I think we know what you have to dress up for this Halloween, <laughs> or or if we ever do get to go to BlizzCon. Oh no! Yeah, <laughs> hot patches. All right. <laughs> I was going to segue into wild support, but <laughs> it's pretty funny. Um, there was one piece of jeez. <laughs> there's one piece of news that uh is, was kind of slid in with the. Uh, the course that announced me here, and that's unnerfs in wild or reverts or whatever you want to call it. Um, and so rather than list them all out, we're going to pull up uh, the website from out of cards that shows what they are. Uh, some of these saw so little play in, in wild. I think that they like, I didn't even remember what they were before, but let's, let's go through them real quick. Uh, so the first one is apotheosis this is a priest uh priest spell common uh holy spell give a minion plus two plus three and life steal this actually might be relevant now that people are running more like divine spirit inner fire priest stuff and so i could see this actually getting some play um and and this combined with uh, actually one of the cards that we'll be talking about in a couple of minutes could could make a difference i guess we'll see so yeah, um so the reason why apotheosis was nerfed in standard in particular was uh its interaction with our good friend blade master samuro oh yeah, that's sucked while, <laughs> yeah so while we haven't seen a whole lot of um you know board decks kind of being uh you know super prolific if the theory crafting stream is anything to go off of we might before too long and so apotheosis onto blade master samuro may be something that we get to deal with before too long so Keep your your uh, eyes open and just be aware if you're playing against a priest that that may be a thing that they may have a uh, Reno with the board clear in in hand. Could be, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, okay, next up is Imprison Scrap Imp. I have never intentionally played this card. <laughs> I didn't even know that it got nerfed. Hmm. Yeah, standard tried to play zoo. It kind of worked. I don't remember why it was it was nerfed. Uh, you're, you're still never gonna really play it, I don't think. But two mana, three three demon dormant for two turns. When this awakens, give all minions in your hand plus two plus two. <laughs> Hydralisk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> oh my. We have the we have the <laughs> we have the show uh, art the, this this <laughs> this week the thumbnail art oh my goodness yeah there we go <laughs> wow <laughs> really wow <laughs> um, oh goodness all right sorry uh, I didn't mean to derail <laughs> anything distracted there <laughs> um, all right um, so I I think that the um, uh, scrap imp was also just to uh, demons, correct? So um, some of the the different things that we would want to run mm -mm. with to actually give it support. Give give all minions in your hand. All minions. Mm hmm. Oh, I thought it was all demons. My bad. Well, I I think demon. it's all. I, it's the card here says all demon or all minions. Yeah. So yeah. So Hi Hyreek the bat support. I mean that hey. ooh, that seems possible. <laughs> that seems very possible perhaps paladin <laughs> <laughs> perhaps uh all right blackjack stunner this is a rogue uh rare card one mana one two battle cry if you control a secret return a minion to its owner's hand it costs two more i don't think that it really anyone ran this to begin with but you never know i mean this is one of those that we put on the shelf for a couple of years until there's more secret support and maybe it turns into a thing i don't know yeah eventually uh, we have here Scavenger's in Ingenuity. This is a hunter common spell. Two mana. Draw a beast. Give it plus three plus three. Um, and again, I I mean, hunter doesn't have a lot of draw. This is definitely targeted draw, but it's draw beast, and I don't know that we're really all that interested in this. Uh, but I guess you never know. So, yeah, I, but here's the biggie, right? This is, and I, I haven't played uh, Wild Ladder in a couple of days. We'll get back to it over the weekend, but... Um, I've seen the complaints all over everywhere about this card. So our uh, good buddy Keltha Sunstrider 
This is the one that we all got for free. Uh, from uh, is it Ashes of Outland? I think. Anyway, it's a six mana four seven. Uh, with a text that says every third spell you cast each turn costs zero, which just enables some crazy OTK type combos, especially in Druid. Uh, have have either of you any thoughts on on this, or have had the chance to interact with it since the uh, revert? It's still not fun being on the receiving end of it. <laughs> uh, Druid gets to do some like, you know, uh, mage things. Druid gets to do some like miracle priest things. It's a uh, yeah, d- doesn't feel good to be on the receiving end of. Um, I mean. I imagine that once we get new toys that I'm not going to say that it's going to fall out of favor. Cause I think that it still very much will be part of the meta, but hopefully it'll be representing a smaller portion of the meta. Once we have new toys to play around with, I hope yeah, I desperately hope. <laughs> I, I mean, I think that historically, right. They refer to this week as like wild week because everything has gotten reverted and it, like we've got this downtime between when the new core set is out nerfs uh, or like reverts happen, but there's no new cards yet. And so everyone wants to play with the recently re- reverted stuff. And so Kelthas is, is one that I think everyone will spend about a week like playing and then maybe it'll fall out of favor somewhat once the new cards are available and people can try the other stuff. So Stuff like this ends up happening. It, let's say it sort of terrorizes the meta for a little bit. It's a switch up, right? Like, I don't really mind yeah. when, like, we, we talk about the meta getting stale and wild so often. And let's say this does sort of take over whatever. Okay, so then, you know, what counters this, right? And and it, mm-hmm. it, it I feel like stuff like this, while it can seem annoying, just sort of just helps change it up and maybe they will do something about it. I mean, and change it to cost one or whatever, but like it's whatever it's fine for now. Let, let people play with their toys. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. And and these other cards, I think like I, I, you know, will they see more play now? Maybe, maybe. I'm not opposed to it. You know, there's always room for combo stuff. And, and I think that, um, you know, uh, things like Scavengers, Ingenuity, or some of these other cards could could see play in the right, you know, combo or the right deck. Um, yeah. So I think that what Hydra said in particular is really um, eloquent, particularly with Kalthos, right? Because, you know, um, you, you said it much more eloquently than I could. Uh, what what I was kind of trying to to say, but not doing as good a job of it as you did. Like, yeah, it it sucks to be on the receiving end of that right now, but it's new and it's different. And if it, you know, is still a, a meta tyrant down the line, then I'm going to be complaining about it. But right now it's just like, I mean, it's not fun to be on the receiving end, but it's a different thing to be <laughs> on the yeah. receiving end. And in every game, someone wins and someone loses. This is just. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what? I, I mean, those things. the interesting piece of it is that we'll have new cards in a few days. And right. I wonder if, you know, maybe we play that with some of the new cards, you know, maybe there's new combos or, or something. Um, and we'll, we'll... we already have the, the new um, disruption card, right? The one that, uh, it's a counter spell for minions and for spells, right? Yeah. Okay. That's a thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, there's, there's ways, you know, to, you could pull this with dirty rat. I mean, you have to want to kill it right away, <laughs> but like there's, huh. <laughs> there's, there's ways or you go under it, right? Hey, whatever. So. All right. So there's I've a- been trying, man. I've been trying. <laughs> <laughs> there's a couple more here uh, that I want to go through. One is Corsair's cash. Uh, this is a rare warrior spell, uh, two mana, draw a weapon, give it plus one, plus one. Back in the day, we would use it sometimes in like bomb warrior where you put this on the, uh, wrench caliber, wrench caliber. There you go. I couldn't remember the name or, you know, I mean, for a little while we were running it in pirate warrior, but I believe that was before all the quest lines, right? Cause this could draw yeah. your anchor, but we don't really need it anymore. 
No. That being said, we like want to draw in car. <laughs> uh, no, that's like drawing patches. Um. Anyways, yeah, whatever. But it, there's potential here. Now I want to talk about about this right here and just give a, um. You know, a real quick, uh, <laughs> because, um, this, the, the crab rides again. And so, uh, the, there's, yes. t- there's two rides people again. as we, as we are community, community focus show. I do want to give a big shout out to our, our friend, uh, El Tino, who <laughs> provided that lovely sound clip, but also, uh, is, is probably the biggest know. proponent of tip the scales paladin that we have ever met. And it's very excited for this card to come back. Uh, this is, this card was needed in, in Murloc pal or Murloc, um, shaman. If, if that's ever a thing again, which it may or may not be. Uh, but also, um, uh, was it was it Romanu joke um, or who yeah. uh, that the, has yep. been um, uh, campaigning for for Crab Rider to come back for the better part of you know a year now or whatever and so uh, having having this card back I know people are probably fairly salty about it just because um, the card is is really good. Uh, <laughs> so I was playing a standard game this morning. Uh, uh, buff paladin just because you know I was I think silver in standard I just I've been playing wild or mercs or theory crafting and so I hadn't played much standard yet and so I, I played a crab rider on two my opponent had the opportunity to remove it but decided to remove other things instead Uh-oh. and then my crab rider got out of control and killed them I think on like turn five or six wow. But, you know, I'm playing buff paladin. I have buff spells. I, I keep on buffing it. And so they added me afterwards to say, uh, you know, ridiculous card and then like blocked me. So I couldn't even see it anymore. And I was just like, I mean, you had the opportunity to kill it. <laughs> so people <laughs> in standard in particular are already irate with with Crab Rider. And they're like, if this wasn't leaving in in, <laughs> in two weeks or or in less than a week, then I on Tuesday the two then i then i would be irate and i'm just like well the crab rides again (laughs) the crab rides again i love the card um whatever murlocs don't have the biggest presence in wild right now and cool let it happen i like it i think it needs a a strong card like this i like i like aggro tools because it I, i feel like it balances the meta like if 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 stuff like this doesn't exist like this is your counter to like all the combo decks, right? The, this there must be a, a a balance in the force, and so this um I think this kind of checks that box for me. But where and hey, if we can make some more aggro decks viable, well, good. Like the, this just this just you know evens things out a little bit. Yes, uh, very good. <laughs> well, no, you like it. Um, all right. Well, let's let's keep going because we've got a bunch more stuff to talk about. But this is this is, I think, our kind of big winner card or big uh, interesting card here. Um, oh yeah, Morg Artificer um, is a uh, uh, it's two mana two four. I don't even know. Like this card is so good that it was seeing play after it got nerfed. Um, so yeah. all all minions take double damage from spells. And so really where we saw a lot of this was in standard like OTK Demon Hunter. Mm-hmm. But uh you can still play in a few other places where you know it could be used for like combo board clears and stuff like that. Um and then here's Ilginoth got uh reverted. So this was six mana at one point. Oof. Um is back down to four. So four mana two six demon hunter legendary with lifesteal, your lifesteal damages the enemy hero instead of healing you. And so this was, um, you know, essentially used mostly in combo decks. I have seen people like Ben from work uh, yeah. do like OTK Demon Hunter in Wild. Uh, he had some kind of crazy combo with Emperor Thoris, and I think to uh, discount everything to to like super low one turn, and then the next turn just go off. Uh, yeah, I recall he was saying he was having good success with it. We did some co-op with it at one point, and and did just fine. It's just it's kind of big brain you have to be able to calculate the math and there's some ways i mean you can make cheat sheets spreadsheets or or whatever it is to kind of uh map out the damage but i'm i'm more of a like i don't know i like the combos that i 
either don't have to think about too hard or just play like filthy aggro decks where I can just go face and again not have to think super hard. I love the I love the concept of it. Um it just is it it takes a little while to get used to calculating the damage like all a pillager rogue type of thing. Um and so Yeah. But so having it reverted just makes room for you know, maybe it's viable and wild at some point. That would be kind of fun to actually have a, a, a demon hunter deck that we could play. Yeah, um, there's a, a really handy chart out there that uh, Clark Hellscream put together. Uh, I'll, I'll find it um, before too long, and, and maybe we can drop that in the show notes. But it it basically is a conversion to where you only have to think about specific cards when it relates to that and what the damage output is with those. And whenever you have that that kind of reference chart, it it's fantastic. Not knowing the reference and you know having to try and math it all out, it would take the majority of your turn if you're not kind of familiar with the play pattern. So uh, I, I will definitely find that that chart and share it with everyone uh, in in chat here. And for our listeners and and uh, uh, watchers on the replay, it will be in our show notes as well. So. Uh, Definitely a handy resource, especially now that uh, it's unnerfed and we can do that without uh, relying on um, uh, discount uh, shenanigans as well. So it's much more consistent there, too. So I, here I found I found one. Uh, there's a few people that had them. I think No Hands Gamer had a, a pretty good one at one time as well. Um, but yeah, uh, I mean, here here it is. Let me let me resize it a tiny bit. But there's, um, yeah, I mean, lots of potential depending on how many Moargs you get, uh, up to almost 100 damage, which is crazy. That's wild. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, gosh, I would love, I would love for it to be a viable combo. Some of these things are hard. It's like the more you play it, you get used to it, um, and and knowing the combos and what you need to draw into and stuff. Uh, but anyways, I yeah. I have um, a gold. So the, the one that I I saw was a little bit less um uh <laughs> pretty, but a little bit more um uh kind of useful in kind of graph form as well. Oh, so that's interesting. Awesome. Well, yeah. we'll, we'll find them. And I I think the one that I was uh, when I was trying to learn it, I got one from No Hands uh gamer that was more like a spreadsheet in. It was handy. It was very handy. Um, and I was, I think I had streamed it at one point. Uh, oh, yeah, here we go. Oh, do you post it in the chat too? Okay. Yep, yep, yep. There we go. I'll just, I'll save it here and I'll put it in with the show notes as well. And um, it, it, this works pretty well if you are trying to uh, calculate the damage. You just add it to the screen mm-hmm. real quick. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little bit small here, but it's probably fine. Um, so yeah, it shows you how many Moargs, um, and whether you're using, um, blast or beam and how many Arcanists you have and how much damage it's going to do, which is really cool. So I like it. And Arcanist is only the very next one that you play. So if you're doing three Moarg and two Arcanist for a blast, then look over at beam with zero Arcanist. So that Uh, kind of thing. Cool. Yeah. The deck is really fun we have so many more um you know tools here in wild and as demon hunter now that lifesteal dh is no longer a thing in standard this is something that we actually may see more support for uh inadvertently in not not necessarily this set because i I don't know that i really saw a whole lot of it here but now that it's no longer constraining standard um dev space we can see it here so to be continued hopefully right I love it. Uh, okay, we've got a couple more to talk about before we before we move on. So, um, deck of lunacy is back to two mana. Uh, I'll never forget the night before the nerfs went live. I cracked a golden one. Uh, oh yeah, I remember that. You were like, dude, check it out. <laughs> so funny, right? I kept it actually. So um, <laughs> nice. I have it. It. It's. I don't think it's 
uh, super viable in wild. Uh, it'll be no. Serious. There's just the pool is like so huge. The reason it was good in standard is that limited pool, and you knew exactly what you were gonna get. Oh yeah, it was great because you could turn. Yeah, I mean, all of your you just got rid of a bunch of garbage, and then you pulled out a bunch of Negrand slams for really discounted. It was uh, yeah, and so you could target it a lot more and the problem yeah i agree with you the problem is the wild card pool so huge that you're going to get a, ran- a bunch of random garbage it'll be fun it'll be really Maybe fun they, it'll oh just yeah won't be very good if they ever okay. create some sort of limited format at some point let's get go in there yeah yeah for sure um okay uh bog spire knuckles this is a an epic um shaman weapon five mana four two after your hero attacks, transform your minions into random ones that cost one more. I don't even know what this was uh, or what it got nerfed to, maybe six, but um, for Evolve Shaman was running it for a little while. Maybe it comes back. I don't know. I'm not real super concerned about this one, but it could be cool. Uh, Dreadlord's Bite is a Demon Hunter weapon, a common three mana, three, two, with outcast deal one damage to all enemies. Uh, which is cool. It is odd. It is odd. Uh, another card from Demon Hunter is Sh- uh, Shard Shatter Mystic. This is a three mana, three two rare battle cry. Destroy a soul fragment in your deck to deal three damage to all other minions. Um, the soul soul Demon Hunter was uh, very fun. I I like it. Um, was a, a thing that I played in Standard for a while there. I don't know if it will be a thing in. Uh, wild i kind of doubt it but i guess you never know it might be a while if yeah. it is yeah um solarian prime is the uh the mage prime legendary so it got i think it was up to nine at one point right um it's now seven mana seven seven demon yeah. um spell damage plus one battle cry cast five random mage spells so this is the one that is generated from the death rattle of so, well the other solarian the, the little two mana one? little astromancer yeah. i think astromancer solarian yeah anyways um so this is a cool card we might see it in reno mage i think but i don't know but i i cool. like the card the cards seems it's always been cool in fact it was sort of like kind of uh, unplayable at at nine but at seven could be um and then we got a couple others i'm kind of trying to jam through them but if you want to say anything just let me know because we got a, a, some other stuff to talk about tonight um, guardian oh, yeah. animals is the uh dual class spell between hunter and druid seven mana epic summon two beasts that cost five or less from your deck give them rush um again this was one that was played a ton in in standard for um a while there and uh yeah i was pretty solid it, i think it was just it was like too too cheap at the time um mm-hmm. all right uh, a couple others um here is a bloodborough brute this is a warrior minion it is a rare seven mana six eight with rush costs one less for each damaged minion again i think this was uh there was a combo in, in standard at the time i think it was risky skipper um yeah risky smither yeah skipper armor smith there you go so you generate a whole bunch of armor and then play this dude for like free <laughs> uh-huh. yeah um yeah who knows i mean it could be it could be solid in the right deck it, i mean it has to sort of be the right deck but uh, cool uh imprisoned antian this is a demon hunter um rare demon five mana ten six dormant for two turns when it's awake can steal 10 damage randomly split among all enemies um yeah i don't know it's it is an odd cost and uh i don't know it was being played for a couple minutes there in the big demon hunter whether it was recruited or um you know summoned otherwise it, 10 damage is a lot it can go face when it does if there but it also will hit hit random stuff on the board dormant is a little slow sometimes in wild but it could see some play i don't know uh jandis bear off is uh the next one this is the yeah. legendary mage rogue card um, in fact, this is one that we got in diamond for the Scalamance set. Um, five mana, two, one battle cry, summon two random five cost minions, secretly pick one that dies when it takes damage. I believe that we were running it in odd rogue for a while and it might come back. I mean, the stats, uh, like you talk about stats for costs, this card was 
bonkers and so i'm excited I'll definitely jam this in odd rogue if odd rogue is back because i ended up cracking this on my other free-to-play accounts and i loved it i loved playing this in in odd rogue just because i could and it getting nerfed when you have such a like a more limited collection was pretty sad and uh no it, it's just so cool and i like I love the fact that you have to make your opponent, you know, kind of decide. You can play mind games if you want. You can pick the one that, you know, isn't obvious. And so people, you can mess with people. It's fun. I like oh, it. And sometimes it gives you two good ones or when it gives you a death rattle minion. It's like. Didn't who- we see uh, somebody get the Steleg and. Um, and Fugan. <laughs> and Fugan. Someone legit got both of those off this. That's rad. Like. Oh, wow. That, yeah. There's see, a screenshot of it. I think that this uh, this will see play for sure because it's good. I'm not I'm not the biggest odd rogue player, but like I know it'll see play. It, it, it's just a solid card. Um, all right. A couple more. Uh, High Abyss Allura. This is the dual class Paladin Priest. Legendary format of 3-6 with spell burst. Cast a spell from your deck. Targets this if possible. Um, this was seeing Tip some play the scales. Yeah. So, so yeah, tip the scales paladin, uh, can be pretty crazy with this. You have to kind of limit, I think the number of spells that you put in your deck, but, mm-hmm. um, this, this can be pretty crazy in, uh, either like an any fin deck or, or, a, like tip the scales deck and yeah, 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 yeah. So. Yeah, so, so in those tip the scales decks, you only play tip the scales, but it's a spell burst, you say. So you have one maker, you have um, the two mana two two Murloc that discovers a secret, you have minions. <laughs> exactly, El Tino. <laughs> you have minions that produce spells so that then you can play High Abyss Allura. You play a cheap spell, and you know that you're tipping the scales with her. Incredible. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's incredible. Sorry. Uh, all right. Uh, Lorekeeper Polkelt is next. Uh, this is our neutral legendary format of 4-5. Battle cry reorder your deck from highest card to lowest card. I What, what did it get nerfed to? Was it 5? Yeah. I it, yeah, like, could... it was, It's so mm-hmm. good for the... T- like targeted draw that like it was being played regardless and so yeah Yeah. you know like okay this card's just solid it ain't going anywhere it was gonna see play anyways and so now it'll just continue to see play uh i think we only have a couple left evocation is the mage legendary this is a one mana legendary spell fill your hand with random mage spells at the end of your turn discard them it had gotten nerfed to two now it's one um you know, recently we saw a little bit of the return of um, uh, Open the Waygate Quest Mage. Not a ton, but some, because the the parrot that replays the five mana spells uh, will will let you recast your um, quest reward, which is a little bit gross. Uh, mm. I don't think that Evocation makes a huge difference, though. It you know, if that deck comes back, maybe this goes into it now. I have made the mistake of of playing this and then like losing my quest because my hand was too full, which is so embarrassing. Oh, no. Um but but you know, it maybe maybe it comes back, maybe it doesn't. Reno quest mage, maybe, I don't know. That's the worst burning your quest reward. Been there, done that. Same. Oh yeah. Feels well, bad. Um, one of the biggest things for evocation is that now you can generate it from one maker. Um, as well so if you're playing open the way gate and you're playing wand maker in that you can have a randomly generated spell in evocation that also generates other spells that didn't start in your deck so um you know you've just got even more things uh there are actually a decent number of them that do that uh like the twin spell um like uh the the fire uh first flame you know stuff like that so there's a, a lot of uh spells at one mana that enable you to generate additional spells. So wand maker is typically played in that deck, and this just makes that an even better inclusion. So we may yeah. or may not see it run and open the waygate mage, 
but we will probably see it played there because it's a one mana card and one maker exists. It'll be randomly generated and then it will randomly generate our win con. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. Uh, a couple more here. We have Priestess of Fury. This is a demon hunter, uh, rare demon, seven mana, six, seven. At the end of your turn, deal six damage randomly split amongst all enemies. Uh, for a minute there, way back when I hit Legend with Odd Demon Hunter with two copies of this in my deck, um, I don't know that it's still viable or not, but I like the card. I mean, seven mana is a little expensive for, for, for Wild, but uh, I mean, like, because this is seven mana and it's random damage. Reno is how many mana? Five? <laughs> and that's six damage to the face. I mean, I guess this goes over taunts sometimes. Uh, that's true. So that's that's a thing. Yeah. Maybe. You'll, maybe. I don't know. I don't. I mean, to be honest with you, I haven't played it in such a long time that I don't remember what it was changed to. I I thought that the mana was low. I but didn't it used to cost five or something? I don't recall anymore. Does anyone know? I, I don't to, remember. <laughs> I'm gonna have to like look it up on the other screen here because uh. What did it used to be? It's it was a seven mana six seven. So this is the original. I just remember it feeling like really good for a while. And I think I mean, gosh, when I used it in wild, it was gosh. It was a six. Oh, it got nerfed to a six five. Oh, okay, okay. Well, I mean, gosh, it was like a, a year ago, maybe. So they gave its health back. Okay. Oh, I. I think it was two years ago because it's rotating and it was ashes. So it was the very, very beginning. So yeah, it's, it's been, you've slept since then. I, I know you don't sleep much, but, but, but you've slept quite a bit since then. Oh gosh, this was May. <laughs> okay. I just pulled up my, I just pulled up my list here. Uh, it was May of 2020. So almost, yep. yeah, two years ago, uh, it was May of 2020. I, yeah, I hit with a uh, odd demon hunter and I was running two copies of this in it, but like it was okay in the meta at the time. I would be interested to see that list. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if we can jam it. I don't think we could anymore because it, because skull was five. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure you were running skull. I will find it after the show. I will find it and I will share yeah. it. I'll post it in the discord. Uh, I, there's a lot to talk about tonight, so I don't want to get too hung up, but yes. Cool. Um, all right, there's just a couple more. The uh, uh, Kane Sun Fury is the Demon Hunter Legendary, four mana, three, five with charge, all friendly attacks, ignore taunt. Yeah, well, we all know about even Demon Hunter, so I'm just going to move on. Uh, I, th I think that this is our last card here is Cabal Acolyte. So this is a priest, epic minion, four mana, two, six with taunt, spellburst, gain control of a random enemy minion with two or less attack. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It, it, that's a card. Um, I, I mean, I played this when it was a two, four and actually, <laughs> I, you know, the card's not bad. I, I almost wonder with inner fire, um, priest being a, a thing, if this goes in, I mean, frankly, I'd rather pray, play a crab rider, but you know, uh, maybe, I don't know. It has a, a, a big backside to it. So working at los dos, <laughs> right? Why not both? They, there you go. Thank you. I did not know what you said. <laughs> <laughs> Been playing too much Duolingo. <laughs> all right. Uh, any, I mean, any final thoughts? So this is the list of all of the wild cards that are getting reverted. Uh, the the reverts are live right now, so these these can all be played as is. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't, don't know. really. Uh, Polkelt and uh, Jandis and Crab Rider seem to be the winners for me. Yeah, and yeah. Polkelt was going to see play no matter what. Jandis is a big one. Crab Rider is the big one. The and other ones are cool. I mean, Kelthos yeah. and Crab Rider, I think, are the big biggest ones. Oh, yeah, Kel no. Kelthos, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I get so confused when standard players were calling Kelthos KT all the time. <laughs> I'm like. 
There's no KT in this deck. What are you talking about? <laughs> How dare like, they? That's Kel'Thuzad. Come on. I know, but they call they call Kel'Thuz KT. I know. No, no, no. We can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, no. Oh dear. All right. Well, that that is that is the segment. Uh, I think of of the news. I want to talk theory crafting, but I think before that, I may want to do a little giveaway. A what? <laughs> a little giveaway, you say? I think this may be a mega giveaway. Mo -mo 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 mega. Uh, what? <laughs> mega. <laughs> mega. Common. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right so we uh we have been very blessed this this season if if you will um yes so early on we we got two standard bundles uh from our friends at hearthstone we also got donated a mega bundle um from from shokunin which is just absolutely incredible and so he gifted the the money to me via um battle net uh like gift card or whatever so it's sitting in my account and the winner of this mega bundle is really just going to get the uh we'll, we'll gift it that way um as opposed to a code um but anyways so so we got that and then we were blessed to be invited to the uh, official hearthstone theorycraft stream yesterday in, in which they gave us uh five more bundles it's like holy moly uh five more it's That's just more than two <laughs> <laughs> That is that is way more than two. Yeah. Uh so the two that we're giving away tonight, we're so we're giving away one more mega bundle and one more standard bundle. And so um Sheep, if 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 you would please remind us uh how how we're giving these away. Absolutely. So um the remaining standard bundle will go to the um person who made the uh uh theory crafting deck that we liked the most so so this is like the most it's it's very very subjective um it's not necessarily with the highest win rate blue and my uh, co uh collaboration would have easily won that one um i i recuse myself from 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 uh discussions there always no shenanigans there uh period and um so that one is <laughs> yeah i i recuse myself from that one uh, actively I, I was like no can't talk about it <laughs> <laughs> so uh however our uh mega bundle courtesy of shokun so that that uh, standard bundle is courtesy of uh, our friends at blizzard so thank you very much play hearthstone and our mega bundle is by the positive experiences so um gosh for weeks now uh folks have been dropping their positive experiences into our positive experiences channel in the discord and so we've got our our big old list of people there and we will spin the wheel live here to see who won from that so that one is random cool cool i like it Oh, sweet. And you have them all here. You're so yep. wonderful. And so is your face. <clears throat> Aww. Got him. Oh, shucks. You got me. Oh, you got me. <laughs> all right. So let me, uh, all right. Let me, uh, create the, the wheel. This will only take a brief moment. All right. Here it is. And let me put this up on the screen here. So let me, uh, uh, just make a, a quick adjustment. And we'll just crop all the ads. Sorry, Xfinity. All right. Ads? What ads? We don't need no stinking ads. All right. So we got lots of names on the list. Uh, yeah, we've had a lot of positive experiences. I would encourage you all to read through them in our Discord. They're wonderful. Um, there's they're they're very fun. Anyways, there's lots of people. Um, lots of people on this list. Uh, you just had to participate to be entered. And so I'm gonna go ahead and click this right meow here we go 
All right, there we go. I don't know how to pronounce it. Vive, Viva, C, V I V E C. We will, uh, congratulations on the uh, bundle giveaway there. We will reach out via Discord to gift the bundle. Awesome. Congratulations. Mega bundle. Very cool. And congratulations, Vive, C. All right. Yeah. Shokunin, you are absolutely a treasure. Thank you for doing that. And yes. So your faith. <laughs> I love it. So nice. So nice. Very cool. All right. Uh, yeah. Do we want to talk uh, real quickly about our favorite uh, Theorycraft X submission? Yeah. So, lootly. So, we, we so, got a lot. And I, I, I do want to say a real quick kind of caveat that we, we got lots. And unfortunately, we didn't get to play all of them we went through lots um and uh we had six hours and it went by so fast um it was insane how quick it went it, it was like blink of an eye it was like five thirty or no uh, like 2 30 right and it was like what we only have half an hour left what happened um anyways i i had a lot of fun i think if if i had my Druthers, like we just wouldn't have stopped. We would have played everything. We would have, you know, played more and more and more. Uh, but anyways, um, the 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 two decks that I liked the the best personally uh, were the um, our our aggro druid deck that was just like bananas. I think and and Sir Finley was. Uh, was incredible sir spinley i should say sir thank you spinley yeah gotta get that one right <laughs> and i'm sorry who who was it that that coined that phrase um yeah that was my good buddy void king 89 he's yeah. the one who dropped that in for us i'm so glad you you tagged him on on the twitter post i didn't i didn't realize uh he, he was around that was amazing uh void king 89 thank you yeah sir spinley I, I think in. Sir Spinley is definitely making the rounds now. I heard it on Coin Concede now with Sir Spinley. Excellent. So yeah, it's it's well, going around. And and Beef Squatch added uh got two turntables and a monocle. <laughs> Where is that? <laughs> so good. <laughs> um that uh so so there was that one. The other one, um and, and we went three and oh with that. We we played only I think each deck for only three games because we just didn't have enough time to do otherwise. Yeah. Uh, the other one that, that was my favorite was Mech Mage. And it was just a, such a fun throwback to our old Mech Mage of uh, wild years past. And um, in particular, there was, there was a couple memorable moments for me. One with the, um, you know, the Colossal Minion is just gnarly. Uh, it, it, and the, uh, I think the, yeah, but the, the true winner there is, uh, Mecha Shark, do, 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 Mecha Shark, do, 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 That was in my head, like, the whole stream. As soon as she said it, it was everything, do, 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 after that. Right. And then. Shark fin fan, do, 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 do. <laughs> so good and uh that that one game in particular where like we discounted everything we're like could we play it now for tempo yeah but could we just be greedy and just dump hand uh with the shark on board and yes we could do that um and so we uh we did that thing and uh it was incredible and so the mech mage was was my favorite the the list that um we played was from nhl uh nhl fan yeah, I'm going to I'm going to side with you on that one. I I think that was my favorite as well. Yeah. So, while the one that I'm recusing myself from was my favorite. My vote has to go to the Mecha Mage as well. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> yeah, you you had the tune like in there. <laughs> and and then I just had to pull it back. Oh. <laughs> like you're like, "Do I know?" No, no. <laughs> I made you think it though, right? You did. <laughs> yes, yes. So, uh, Marty B, aka NHL fan, NJ1, however you say your name, um, 
Hey, so uh, congrats, um, NHL. Thank you for the list. And and that was, uh, I think, our, our kind of big winner. We got a lot. We got a lot, a lot, a lot of fun decks. And there were so many um, that, that we want to continue playing. I think there's some that um, need uh, some additional refinement, some of them that we just didn't get enough time to fully... Um, you know embrace i think what we were really looking for was like as many new cards as possible and so and so while the rules that we were given were like hey they have to have at least five new cards including one legendary uh when we see a deck like questline hunter like yes it has the new cards but like it 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 basically kind of like is the same deck and do i want to play it on ladder like absolutely but uh, for for showcasing in an event like something as as new as possible is is super awesome for uh, for us because it's just it's 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 uh new shinies <laughs> and so um anyways yeah congrats and I, I i think this is maybe a good segue for us to jump into our um maybe early impressions of the new cards and overall um from the uh, theorycraft event there is there is some news I see floating around. Actually, do we want to cover that super quick? I apologize. Uh, let me. You so, know, I I really think we should because this one is actually a really important bit of news for our format in particular. All right. So there's so Ixar was doing an AMA earlier today. It's always hard for me when he does these on Fridays because it it like I'm at work and then get straight home and jump right into the show, and so I was scro- scrolling through it very quickly before we started, and I saw two things in particular that talked about wild, and so I uh, grabbed them here. Um, oh, look, it's a yes paladin question who just happens to be in chat, uh, and so these are pretty cool. I, I normally wouldn't kind of stop the show to to talk about these, but they're wild related and they're very interesting. So the question from yes paladin is has the idea of wild exclusive support cards ever been thrown around to breathe some new life into set specific archetypes i.e jade rogue um, og Cthune, etc and ixar's um response he says elevator pitch we make a new set of cards made up of mostly old hearthstone favorites but also some new cards that go straight to wild to support archetypes that are fun but were never quite powerful enough becomes the packs you buy if you want to play wild and then he says matt london and company have been cooking up some ideas in this space very early but we like it as a starting concept what Uh, and it looks like um there is a uh uh there's some stuff from matt here and let me just um i'll just i'll just bring it up on the on the screen real quick so let me um let me uh zoop uh something over here so well, I just need to re- resize some, some stuff so that we can uh, see it a little bit better. All right. That sort of works. Okay. So Matt says that um, every player matters. I'm reading this for the first time, mind you. So uh, this is new to me as well. Every player matters. A plan is forming to ensure that no matter how you enjoy playing Hearthstone, there are things in the works to surprise and delight you. But to explain the plan, I have to tell you about my new job a thread he's got a new job what okay a few months back as part of the hearthstone team's restructure i accepted a new role leading a small team of designers working on modes modes that elusive fourth button on the home screen that is not standard battlegrounds or mercenaries it covers arena solo content duels tavern brawl and new projects i've also worked hard to bring wild and classic under our banner i'm a big fan of both modes and players who love them deserve more direct attention This week's wild theory crafting stream should indicate that many people on the team believe this. By the way, uh, Matt, (laughs) Matt participated in the wild theory crafting event, uh, as a patron patron, something or other. And, and he posted that and I I responded, I was like, that was you. He's like, yeah, we played against each other. It's a really close games. And that was so cool. It was really neat to see that It, it shows that he's, obviously invested in wild yes when he's uh-huh. i've seen him hit he got like high legend previously playing um aggro like shadow priest and uh i love it when i see the devs playing wild it, it's very heartwarming anyways um okay so he says that uh, this doesn't mean that i'm quote the wild guy from now on i'm focused on ways to make the format more accessible final design calls 
uh, that calls the shots on balance. So please don't DM me about <laughs> Kelthos. <laughs> uh, we're looking at ways to better engage the players of all our modes. We're in the early stages now so there aren't a lot of details to share although dean dropped a bunch of hints in tonight's ama the plan is to give love and attention to everything but we are a small team and can't do everything at once please be patient as we get to work tldr if you like wild and classic limited formats solo content or wacky experiments give me a follow and we'll go on this journey together that is awesome i, I don't yes. really have anything else to say aside from like that's super cool and uh, you know, my, my interactions over the past year with Matt have all been great. He's super nice. Uh, he's a writer, by the way, who's written some books um, and uh, just an all around like very great person. So I'm, I'm very excited and to have somebody who's dedicated specifically to the format and, uh, and just big, big shout out to, I think to the, the Hearthstone team in general, not trying to uh, brown nose here, but we did see lots and lots of love for the wild format over the past couple of weeks, just this this expansion and, and the pre-release events in general. It's just amazing. And so when I see things like this, like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wild format is going to get even more support than, than we just got. Like, that's awesome. So that's that's incredible news. I'm, I'm really excited think, to see that. I don't think yeah. they would have added the, the theory craft stream mm -hmm. on, on the wild side if they didn't have plans, right? And they're they're adding these diamond legendaries to wild you know we're seeing our old favorites it, the the even if it's like slow we're seeing like this build up right and the fact that yeah. we were we were featured many other of our friends were featured it was really cool they're they're definitely showing us some love and i i've got some faith yeah i, I do too and it it Honestly, it seems like it's a trajectory of more and more support and more and more, um, you know, for the longest time, it was very much like, oh, the wild cards, that's where, you know, standard cards go to die, right? Like back in the day. Um, and not like this. <laughs> <laughs> and we've seen our first ever format bans in the past, the past year. Um, you know, w we've seen different, yes, balancing. But also, you know, emphasis on our mode. Raffle was on the launcher. We were, uh, us and other wild creators were theory crafting wild. Like, that's the first time that's ever happened. So it's additional support, it's additional eyes, and it's additional, you know, just like resources given to the format here. So, you know, we're, we're definitely not getting as much as standard is. And we wouldn't, we shouldn't expect that, right? But it's a, positive trajectory and the fact that it's continuing to go that way and that they continue to, to develop yes more you know just like oh this thing that that standard had we're getting that too but we're getting teams towards us as well and that's being included in in the theory crafting stuff is huge felt great for us yeah um even if we weren't involved in it i seeing wild get additional eyes is always a good thing the fact that there's this team that is largely devoted to wild is huge 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 also yes. i complete sidebar the, the fact his very very last thing says tldr if you like wild and classic limited formats etc that there's a journey i i i think that that might be kind of a hint that we're gonna you know, see Nax out. Nax out. <laughs> <laughs> well, especially if we like, we all just got Diamond Lothab. Like, right? I mean, come on now. It, they go hand in hand, right? So, I think so. Uh, all right, there was one other tweet um, from Ixar that I wanted to bring up real quick since we're uh, talking about that stuff. Um, and again, this this AMA happened over the past like hour or so, and so. I may be, um, there may be other stuff that I don't know about. And uh, if I miss it, y'all in chat can either tell us or I'm sure we'll catch it for next week. But there's, here's, here's one other post that was from this, uh, the same AMA from earlier today. So this is a question from um, Victor Allen Baxter. 
Uh, the question is, can you talk at all about the philosophy behind the recent wild reverts? A lot of people from the community are wondering why they seem so light, especially when the team reverted what many would consider a problem card, Kelthus. Thanks. And so Dean says, the philosophy is simple. Revert the cards that would make wild more fun. Don't revert cards that would make wild less fun. That is obviously a subjective thought, but that is the goal. And so there you go. I mean, this, this was pretty simple and straightforward answer. Um, and you know what? I mean, they, I think they have a good eye on things. And like, if something gets out of control, they'll just nuke it again. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I think, I think what will happen, like, and I, and I hear complaints about Kelthos or whatever, but like, it's the week in between the rotation. Like, give it a little bit of time. And I would bet dollars to donuts that when the new cards come out, like the quote unquote problem cards from today will be much less of an issue. And of course, everyone's going to jam the stuff that just got reverted. But like when all the new stuff comes out, the play rate will, in my mind, most likely decrease uh, because there's new stuff to play. Now, Crab Rider, man, that's a different story. But Kelthos, I don't know. And maybe <laughs> not, maybe not, you know, but whatever. They know, obviously, that Kelthos is potentially absurd and uh, could terrorize them. So they know, right? It's it's Matt London made a joke about it. Like, don't DM me. Right. So yeah, yeah. it's, it's definitely on their radar. It's not like they're just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, whatever. We'll revert it and turn a blind eye to it. Like it, they're obviously going to watch it. So, yeah. Well, and, and like, like you said earlier when we were talking about the, the reverts, uh, Hydra. Yeah. It 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 feels bad to lose to it right now, but this is that that wrinkle in between. It's basically a new card. Again, if it continues being an issue, then and and we don't see you know changes, then okay, we we politely uh hit up Matt for changes, even though he specifically <laughs> said not to. Right? <laughs> That's great. I'm joking about that. Let's not do that part, but. <laughs> Um, you know, then then calling for you know a re nerf or you know some sort of adjustment may be warranted, but I mean it's it's been a few days, y'all. Like let's either have fun with it or uh, try to play around it. I guess I, <laughs> I don't know. You know I, what, I can't though, play around it. Like I'm not I'm not gonna lie, I'm not playing it or around it very well. So <laughs> whatever. Well, time will tell. Time will tell. So we'll 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 see. You know, I I don't I hate to bring out the you know the the torches and pitchforks when it's been all of right. like three days so let's revisit and at least it's battle cry isn't someday i'll be just like you <laughs> <laughs> and at you least it's not calling us a loser all right yeah it's not calling us a loser <laughs> hey loser <laughs> <laughs> wasn't me over and over and over right <laughs> all right all right well we we've been at this for an hour already i want to talk about the theory uh the theory crafting event if if y'all are okay with that because yes. that was that was huge all right so I, I i have this broken down into a couple of of sections i'm just trying to kind of organize my thought so i wanted to talk about a few things ideally like thoughts impressions what's good what's bad what's just different um specifically the the new stuff right so colossals dredge nagas and then new and returning archetypes or other thoughts um and then you know i mean anything else now the one thing that i i want to say is we um we got to play this for six hours right this was 9 a.m pacific until 3 p.m pacific mm -hmm. we could have played for three days without stopping right like there is so much uh untapped potential like oh yeah and we barely scratched the surface like there's just so much here and so uh, like i would i would have some of these decks like i would have played for hours or what i you know in my mind the thought was like oh yeah let's play this and then we can take it back and we can refine it a little bit and play some more and it was like there just ain't time to do that uh unfortunately and so 
Um, and, and again, I, because we were playing, I didn't get a chance to watch, uh, the other wild, uh, streamers do their thing either. And so I don't know what everyone was playing, you know, I'll have to scour YouTube and, 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 uh, Twitch VODs over the weekend. Um, anyways, I want to talk real quick, kind of about the new things, and then we'll talk about our kind of key takeaways. And so first up, I want to talk about Colossals. Um, and this is the perspective of of someone who's I guess got to play them for uh, a few hours. They're super freaking cool. Uh, every time we played one, it was awesome. Uh, yeah, yeah. So we played mage the the mage one. We played the paladin one. We played the demon hunter one. The priest and the the hunter. I think we played the I think we played the uh, the warlock one once because I remember the animation. And and <laughs> the animation was crazy, and the noise that it made was gross, and it was like it was it was great, and so um, you mean <laughs> when when Zeddy destroyed us with the um, so the we, that happened one? once, but we got to play it uh, as the priest that one time. Yeah, oh yeah, that yeah. too. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh yes. Um, oh, yes. and so kind of my thoughts. Uh, they seem very good. Um, the mage one in particular seems really strong because it does a bunch of AOE damage. Uh, the hunter one I liked; it's super cool. The only thing I don't like about it is that the um, the appendages only have rush via battle cry, and so if you pull it out um, via like a recruit mechanic, it um, you know the battle cry doesn't trigger, and so they don't have rush. So that's a little sad. Um, aside from that, like. They just seemed cool. The Demon Hunter one in particular, I, I just loved. We got lethal with it one time, like from the little blasts from the appendages. Yes. Um, the mage one is is crazy. The paladin one drawing a bunch of cards. Um, yeah, I, I love these. And I I wish that we could have played them even more. Uh yeah. Sheep, yeah, what do you think? So I think as an overarching archetype. They're really fun. They're they they scratch that itch of like a really cool thing happening and a really impactful thing happening. But I don't think that they're broken either, right? I agree. Um and I think that um they also fit a very specific niche. Some of those I think that we will be realized in our format like Gaia the Tectonic, the mm-hmm. the Mage Colossal. Um, perhaps the Leviathan, I think that, that, you know, we, we need to refine that a little bit more. Um, there needs to be a little bit more support for say the, uh, demon hunter one, but that was really cool. Um, I don't know if the warlock one ends up seeing play, et cetera. So as an overarching thing, I think that they were really fun, really good, but not broken. And I think that they will be really fun to play. And I think that particularly like that uh, priest deck that that we played where we made a lot of colossals and like it. But, yeah. <laughs> y- y'all played big priest before. We played colossal priest yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's great. <laughs> um, so being able to do that, I, I think will be really fun, but I don't think it'll necessarily be, um, you know, something that's kind of the, the, the meta tyrant with the possible um, and I say very possible exception of Gaia the Tectonic. Uh, I think that one's probably the best one because I think that's the one that got the most uh, support both in this set and that that we kind of had the existing infrastructure for and that will be really, really impactful um, in a deck that everyone really wants to play, uh, especially with the new um, draw a mech and discount your mechs by one. Um, that that mage got that I think that was just in the big dump of cards like things like that are 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 just like the the glue that hold that together that we'll see Gaia the Tectonic see the most play but um, that's kind of what I think about the uh, colossal cards uh, I, I I'm really excited to play with more of them and play some more colossal priest <laughs> what do you think Hydra uh, to Nate's point when he mentioned that it's a bit of a bummer that we didn't get. Uh, like for the hunter one, we didn't get the rush, you know, when in, when the colossal was pulled out of the deck. However, yeah. <clears throat> I was thinking because 
initially I was actually not expecting that you would get the butt of the card when it was pulled from your deck. So actually I was still stoked that you still got the rest of the stuff. Uh-huh. Like, so if this is pulled or ratted or whatever, you still do get the other half or halves or however many you, you end up getting yeah. your colossal. So it, there is the downside of, you know, the effect of, you know, not getting rush on the one, like the hunter one and whichever other effects for the other cards. But the fact that it's not a battle cry and you still do get mm-hmm. um, that effect, I think is awesome. Yep. Right. Yep. Yeah. And you know what? We did play the Hunter one at one point. Like we just played it and and the uh the the Hydra heads are crazy good. Um Yeah. I mean it's like a it's it's essentially a board clear, right? Because you one rushes in, you get two more. Like Oh, it's gross. It was incredible. Yeah, it it was they're super fun. But I agree with sheep, like they're not they don't feel broken. And they no. they turn the course of the game though for sure. It's like, hey, you thought you were gonna win this? Not anymore. And that happened to us. I yeah. believe it was the game against Zeddy where I yeah. thought we we were like, you're done, right? Like we have you. We our entire board was full, and we're like, what are you gonna do? Uh, well, he, <laughs> the answer it, was Gigafin. The answer was Gigafin, and it <laughs> ate our entire board, and we had played. I think every card we had in our hand. It was a giant like, board of magnetized mechs. Like, and we're like, I, I guess that's what you're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, you didn't call Ghostbusters, but you called Megafin. <laughs> and um, and Mega Megafin fin. came... <laughs> Megafin came to the rescue. So I don't know if these are going to end up, you know, seeing a lot of play in wild, like at higher ranks, but... Oh my gosh, they are super fun. I I really enjoy them. And I do hope we end up seeing them. Because <laughs> like just they're so cool, right? They're, they're, fun. they're late they're late game. We know that wild can tend to be pretty fast, but I mean, if you can get there like you guys mentioned, they do flip the game like right on mm-hmm. its head like right over. They they yep. want idiot. Yeah. 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 And and we saw that a couple times, you know, the the obvious one that that you spoke on against Eddie. I can't remember who the uh one was when we were playing against the mech mage. And you know, we were pretty much just like uh, rolling, like we were we were going, and then they played Gaia the Tectonic and they were able to trade appropriately and all of the you know one damage AoE. We had board, we had initiative, we had None of those things after Gaia the Tectonic was played. <laughs> it's almost like yeah. like with Gaia, it's almost like playing um like this planned out defile slowly. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you have to think your way through the defile turn. <laughs> like mm-hmm. you're just uh-huh. you're actually doing, you're making the trades, letting it go, make another trade, let it go. It was it's yeah. really neat to see. It really was. So just a kind of yes and there, like because so many of them do feel like those comeback mechanics that could help extend the game or flip it. We saw, we saw both. Mm. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. All right. Let's, uh, what do you think about the new keyword dredge, uh, sheep? What do you think? Yeah. So I am so glad that I get to talk about, uh, dredge first because, um, blue train and my aggro druid heavily features this mechanic. So, um, you know, Sir Spinley obviously is fantastic. You know, uh, being whenever you sink a card to the bottom, being able to know that that's what you're going to kind of pull up to the top um, is really cool. And if you're discover, you know, you're you're discovering it. It's stuff you put in your deck, hopefully intentionally. Hopefully, there's no weasel tunnelers, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but you get to decide what it is you're pulling it up. And that was so much more powerful than I thought it would be. And I thought it was going to be pretty powerful as it was. So um, I'm really, really impressed with it. Um, you know, the the fact that with minimal exceptions, whenever it, it notes it, you don't draw the card. It just puts it on top of your deck. I think will get some, uh, take some getting used to like, like that's, it's a, a familiar mechanic in the the dis uh, the um 
uh, discover and you're moving it up to the top, but you don't necessarily always get it in your hand. Yeah. So um, I, I think it's really strong. I, I think we're going to be seeing quite a bit of it. Um, and I'm so glad that, you know, being able to uh, play it in that aggro druid worked just even better than I thought it was going to. So uh, really excited to see, uh, you know, we're not dredging up hot takes. I, I think that's a cold yeah. take after after playing with it. But uh, yeah, it's great. <laughs> what do you think, Hydra? I think it's great as well. And you bring out a good point of, re you know, remembering how it works, because sometimes I think both uh, I think Nate as well as myself, when we were we were dredging, we were thinking it's like a tracking almost mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like uh -huh. like, OK, we pick the card. Where is oh, it? Wait. <laughs> where, where, where'd it go? Oh, yeah. If I don't have a, an ability to draw it, I'm not going to get it right now. But you're setting up for the next turn. Or if you have the draw, you're going to get it, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the entire new mechanic of Dredge is potentially extremely strong in the game of Hearthstone and can be really long lasting. It's something that we haven't had in the game whatsoever and it adds an entire new way of playing your deck oh yes right i i i, oh, yeah. I feel like for combo decks or like whatever you can set up turns ahead what you're going to do like i i know there's going to be a deck out there where like okay yeah i see what you're doing right you just put those cards on the bottom of your deck now you're picking which one you want and like setting up your turns well, you know, I sit here trying to kill you with my aggro deck, and I'm going to combo me out. <laughs> um, I feel like it's going to be something we continue to see. Like, Discover uh, was a mechanic that it wasn't just a, a one-off. Uh, we continue to see it. It's been really important. In my opinion, Dredge, I think, changes how we play the game in, obviously, these types of decks. Uh, and have yeah, to yeah. go against them too. Just go faster. Um, <laughs> do you think we're going to see a lot more gnome Feratu if people are are dredging things a lot? Hmm. Possibly. Yep. 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 Maybe. I mean, it's only one class, but I could see. I mean, people were playing it anyways because, it, like, an even warlock or whatever, just because it's a, uh, um, you know, a card in that two mana spot but with the dredge like yeah uh that's a, that's a probably a pretty decent tech choice if a bunch of people are going to be experimenting with dredge and then you just get rid of that card that they wanted so badly so <laughs> or, or like you know brand brand um gnome or, or whatever it is uh dredge i think is really really cool i think that it, it it's just taken me a minute to get used to because it presents itself like you know kind of like discover or like scry where you um or you know i guess discover right so you th see three cards you pick one you don't get it right now that one goes to the top what was cool is when i didn't know this before we um played with it but you know there's that button where you can hide your choices so that you can look at the screen at, at you know your card placement your opponent's cards or whatever and yeah. so when you hide it and then you bring it back up it, like this ocean waves like splash up with the cards uh it was so cool and so there was a time we were just clicking you know hide unhide hide unhide to see the you know, <laughs> <laughs> it was great now uh -huh. what, what takes it you know is i think will take a minute for me to get used to anyways was the idea of like oh no, no no like you don't get this right now no you don't um you, you you get this when you draw next which is like you either have to draw cards this turn or when you start your next turn um that being said the the big winner for me was the um aquatic one from from druid the zero mana dredge oh, yeah. and if it's a spell or, or no what is it if you have the mana draw it and uh in biggin you know in biggin costs zero <laughs> mana so i remember it was like we, i mean we had said and i'll post the video this weekend uh but it was like oh if only we had in biggin oh well let's just dredge it up and you play <laughs> you know you play it and like well there it is then we got it it was like it, and it's zero it's just that's the best combo 
And that was on turn one, too. It was just kind of like calling our shot, you know, corner pocket. We're going to aquatic that in big and, and we did. It was, yeah, it, it was, was great. It was crazy. Yeah. So I it just it it. I'm going to misplay a little bit, I think, until I get used to the idea that, like, nah, just because you dredge it up doesn't mean that you're drawing it right now, but right. Uh, it seems crazy strong. Now, there's going to be, I, I think this is going to encourage a lot of, like, questionable tech choices um, in, in decks, uh, but, you know, it is what it is. Strong mechanic, though. All right. Uh, oh, yeah. Let's talk about Nagas. Hydra, what do you think about Nagas so far? I think that we didn't get to see a lot of Nagas. We played a Naga deck. Um, and we didn't get to see other people playing Nagas. So that sort of tells me already nobody really thought they were competitive, competitive enough in Wild to really see a lot of play because we didn't see much of them right like most things we saw were like how many uh mech mages and uh mech hunt or sorry mech paladins and we still saw like the quest hunters and stuff naga wasn't a thing we were really seeing so to evaluate it i mean i don't think we played it enough or saw it enough so yeah unfortunately i think for wild at the moment it's slow and a bit of a miss but if if we continue to see support it could definitely be thing it's a new tribe right like it's something mm-hmm. that i feel is going to have to be built upon for us to actually see it played in wild yeah we, we so we played a couple right we we played a questline hunter uh that was playing the new i believe it's a legendary raz Ra, raj Nij- oh, yeah, raj raj yeah, yeah which is cool it's a little bit it felt a little bit awkward to to play I think if you really want to do it, maybe you wait until like you're comboing off and you maybe you use that instead of the like the Dragon Bane. But like Dragon Bane probably does a lot more damage because you're playing like little damage spells. It's like two damage, two damage where Dragon's Bane is going to do five. Um, But it's a cool idea. When we had played it, like we still won. We just dropped it for tempo and it was like, all right, well, I'm just going to get in a little bit of extra chip damage. And it seemed mm-hmm. cool. Uh, the other big one that we had played, I think um, there was a couple. One was in the Demon Hunter deck when it did like three damage AOE to everything. It was the board and phase, which was cool. But I think it cost seven, which in Wild is a lot. Um, it was really cool, but it was it was pretty pricey. Uh, and then the only other one that I recall was Queen Ajara, which was pretty cool. Uh, it's felt a little bit slow because you have to play three spells while it's in your hand to, mm-hmm. to discover the cool card. And of the four, like the only one that we were interested in playing at all was like discover a, a colossal. It costs one. And it was like, why would you choose anything else? Like the other ones, the other selections felt very lackluster by comparison. They were okay. They were okay. That they was were, the fun one though. That yes. <laughs> and I think I felt a little bit guilty because the game before also was like, hey, do we want to win or do we want to like, you know, give the audience what they want? And we're like, yeah, let's just win. Uh, and so the next game, it was like, no, 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 no. We we have to we have to do like play the fun stuff that people want to see. Um, and so you know, I don't know. There's uh, but the card itself is cool. We got way more decks to try. Um, then we had time to one in particular that I was looking forward to was a Reno Naga priest list. And there was between Nagas and spells, like maybe it works. I don't know. Um, they felt slow to me. I will say that because you have to like cast spells while they're in your hand for them to do stuff. And so like you get the payoff by like not playing them, which feels kind of bad or slow or whatever it is um and so you know we will see there were times definitely we dropped them for tempo um where we probably normally wouldn't want to do that so i don't know you know we'll we'll see we'll see but anyways yeah uh sheep any thoughts yeah so i think that 
to me, all of the Nagas had um, really strong effects. Um, I think that they were just probably a little too slow, um, at the very least, in the ones that we were were kind of playing around with, right? Um, so the standard is kind of slowing down. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a four set meta. I I love four set metas because I like to go under them. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, you know, they're trying to slow standard down, and this is one of those things that they're kind of whether it's kind of baiting people into playing slower by playing multiple spells to activate the thing, you know, to kind of incentivize that, whether it's baiting or just rewarding, right? Um, or if it's just that, like, you know, they're, those effects are so powerful that it's actively worth doing that thing and it's worth kind of prolonging, you know, uh, meeting that barrier. We'll, we'll kind of see there. But I, I think for our format in particular, it's just a little too slow as kind of a mechanic. That said, uh, one thing I hadn't considered, and I, I think hit, uh, blah, 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 Hydra, you hit the nail on the head right there for sure when you said that, like, this is a, a whole tribe. This is going to see more support than just this set. Like, that they're going to continue coming out Mm -hmm. Um, as they see more synergy with one another, as they see more uh, spells that actively um, incentivize you to play them as they see more support in general as a tribe, et cetera. um, They may actually be worth a lot more in our format, especially once some of them rotate and they're not, you know, kind of being hamstrung by the the ones that are in the 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 format there. So yeah. we'll 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 kind of see. Um they're in I their infancy basically, slow. right? Yeah. We will see. Um I, I see in chat a good point about how much do they support quill bores. <laughs> and uh I mean <laughs> there you go. I don't know. And and I think we'll see. You know yeah. in, in battlegrounds they did, okay. That's true. <laughs> well, not gonna lie, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I was just it was only a matter of time before somebody said it. Um we we will see. I don't know. I'm happy that, you know, they updated the old cards uh with the Naga tag for for consistency purposes and I think that, you know, there there may be a chance and we see from from time to time things be added. There is a rich backstory, I think with the Nagas more so than Quillbor in terms yeah. of, I mean, you have two major characters, like two major lore characters, right? Between Queen Ashara and, and Lady Vosh that are Nagas. And uh, the story is, is pretty incredible. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll get into that a little bit later. But um, for those of you that haven't, last week we did a, a lore episode on, on Nizoth and there was a lot there. And then we'll, uh, we'll be continuing that shortly so we may see more but i think in the in the world of of warcraft there's a uh, i mean goliath tell me if i'm wrong but it seems like there's <laughs> there's significantly more uh like like you know nagas than there would be quillbore anyways uh the last thing that i want to talk about for this um wild theory crafting event was just notes on any um either brand new archetypes returning archetypes or other thoughts um uh, i'll start here i think the number one thing I, I do want to say is that we were mostly playing decks that were submitted to us um, via Discord, and we were trying our best to play with new cards. And so what uh, what I want to do for myself personally is to, you know, cook up some decks that are that are primarily like trying to be more kind of meta decks or taking a look at existing decks and seeing what new cards fit into them. Um, and uh what we really spent a lot of time doing on the theory craft stream was was playing like we were trying to jam as many new cards as possible and so the rule that we were given was uh these decks have to have at least five new cards um one legendary and four of anything else but they could be duplicates and so we could have a deck really that like uh you know had had three new cards in it um and we we tried hard not to do that and so you know we'll we'll see anyways i think the clear winners from our limited experience number one like the mech mage seemed really strong 
the aggro druid seemed really strong um and and those were like kind of the big winners uh, a lot of the other stuff that we played was very fun um and but was kind of more off meta uh paladin seems good uh, not I think the other two are better, but Paladin seems pretty strong. I mean, two mana draw five is is ridiculous. Um, don't dust that one when you pack it because it's going to get hit. I can guarantee it. I can guarantee it. Um, let's see what else. I do think that there are going to be, and again, we didn't get a chance to experiment with these, but we will see some old archetypes with new cards. Shutterwalk Shaman, Questline Hunter. There's pirate stuff. Like Questline Warrior is going to get refined from this set we didn't play oh, yeah. it because nobody wants to see that right but um but but anyways uh y- yeah what do you think uh what do you think sheep yeah so mech mage is back big time yeah, it is. I, I really think that it's actually back I, I i don't think it's bait um do 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 <laughs> yeah. no no well, it's it's it, it was like remarkably good and i think between the colossal and the mecha shark mm-hmm. like it, it's just gnarly and the old set it was like what is it mech warper and uh the the one that reduced galvanizer. galvanizer like wow and we saw people yeah. play goblin blast mage i don't think we ran it but we saw some people playing no. it i don't think that that yeah. makes the cut uh but the no. deck in general is like wow you barely need any spells it's just like book of specters to draw but when uh-huh. was the last time we saw a board based um so uh, like mage deck. Murloc, Murloc mage. Book <laughs> of Spectres and then the new the new spell, the three mana draw made uh, a mage, a mech, and discount all the mechs in your hand by one. Yeah. Especially card. because of Mecha Shark, right? Because we we were using at one point Mecha Shark like a flame waker. Remember, oh, we discounted it, all yeah. the mechs in our hand and we were playing zero mana mechs, and it was just doing three damage. Uh, like paying three damage, paying three damage, paying three damage, paying. It, it was incredible. Like <laughs> that. That's I, incredible. I think we, yeah, we have to run the Molten uh, Reflect discount card. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! I mean, it was strong <laughs> with Flame Waker, but no, we don't want to. Run it. <laughs> uh, someone asked about the new um amalgam. Uh, it seemed pretty good actually because you just you discover yeah. another card um and actually the number of times i think that we there was times that we discovered like really good stuff and i don't know why that happened but there was like when we were playing that even rogue deck that i think i was misplaying pretty hard but like we discovered three no 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 it was at least two copies of hook tusk right um yeah which oh, was oh yes which that card was really fun by the way um and so yeah yeah, shout out to arkham cookie that was a fun deck i think i was misplaying it but but the hook tusk especially is is really cool one of the treasures is steal your opponent's highest minion and so we were playing against a shutterwalk shaman and (laughs) uh and so they would like freeze our entire board with a giant um snow dude whatever it's called they're like all right Mm -hmm. um i'll take take that thank you (laughs) again and, <laughs> and again. then we did it again <laughs> yeah. yeah um another one <laughs> <laughs> all i was thinking it was like the uh, uh i like your day <laughs> i think i will take it <laughs> <laughs> and so we played it you know twice in a row they played a giant snow fury doodad whatever he's called and then we stole it and then we discovered a third one and the only reason we couldn't play it is because we were board locked and we would have just done it again and yeah i it made me uh regret hitting that uh what, oh we wasted a backstab or something like that I, yeah to make hand space or, yeah. oh yeah yeah we had wasted one earlier and then didn't have it yeah to make the board space yeah oh well it was so fun anyway absolutely so um, I, I think that technically a returning archetype is Mech Mage. I think it'll be different. Um, I think it'll be a blast, even though we're probably not running Blast Mage. <laughs> pew, 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 pew. Yeah. Um, as for myself, I don't want to be a broken record, but I'm going with Mech Mage as well. It was one of my all-time favorite decks. I even... So 
Book of Spectres is, is, was obvious, the obvious pick for the return of this deck. Three years ago, when they released Book of Spectres, I actually brought back Mech Mage and inserted that into it. And I was playing it on ladder. I believe it was, I, I think it was before new ladder. So it was still regular rank five or whatever. I played it to rank five. So where there is no bonus stars. Right. And so I, I made my way there with Mech Mage and the friend requests that I got were, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> like, what year is it I would get? Like, it, it, all this. Uh, well, I won, so I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I basically inserted uh, Book of Spectres in it at some point. Um, I believe I was running Aluneth and then um, ran Blingtron to get rid of it if I was going to uh, burn my whole deck. That was kind of fun. That's uh, just great. To, you know, destroy your own Aluneth or whatever. Uh, it, it was just, it was cool. And I was excited that Book of Spectres could have brought the deck back. It totally didn't, right? Nobody else played <laughs> it. I was the only one playing Mech Mage where I inserted that card into it. But now everyone was running uh, the new mechs and and that card, so I think I think maybe maybe it could be back. I'm scared. I'm a little hesitant because something like the new aggro druid is so fast and everything. But I mean, I mean, if, I, if, I, I mean, I will say that mech mage is the obvious choice, right? Because like I felt like we were pushed there because there were so many mechs that like. I don't like, I don't, I'm not even, you know, I don't, I don't fancy myself the best deck builder, but like it, it, it's just there. Like the synergy is just screaming, like play me because, uh, the cars are strong, right? Um, the Colossal's strong. The mech shark is, is strong. Um, and then with our old mech cards that discount, like it, it was, I mean, it's not refined yet, but like, dude, the deck is solid. And yeah, it, uh, it's not, I, it's, you know, you don't have to be like some, there's no big brain plays involved. I mean, there's a few combos, but like it, it's, it reminds me of like when we played um, like Tempo Mage way back when, right? You just play cards for mana. Uh, I mean, there's some combos, but like, you know, so, play the Galvanizers, then play the Mac Warpers. Get everything down. Do your thing. <laughs> Make everything cost less. Right, right. Before, before you play the rest. <laughs> yeah. Basically, all you got to know. Yeah. And so, I mean, there's still... there's. Oh, and don't do what our opponent did thinking Cogmaster was a mech. <laughs> yeah, there was a... It's not. Uh, nope. Yeah. All right. Well, any, any final thoughts before we sort of uh, call it a, a night here, Sheep? And you got anything? Mostly just that I'm really excited to, yes, play Mech Mage again. Yes, play Mech Paladin again. Yes, play a more ref even more refined Aggro Druid. <laughs> uh, um, gosh, so many new decks and cards that I, I can't wait to play play with in more than just six hours. That six hours was fun. I want that. I, I, I want to continue that. Like, let's Tuesday. But let's get there. <laughs> right? Yeah. Hydra, any any final thoughts from you? I I love that we were included. I love that mostly that wild was included. And so this Theorycraft stream, I think, gave me the biggest hype for an expansion release in wild than I've ever had because wild was promoted. And yeah. I I just absolutely love it. We got to showcase it amongst many, many friends. And normally it's like, okay, yeah, that card might be good. That card, all like 90% of the cards are going to be bad, right? And then, you know, these select few, like our reviews, you know, we, we pick and choose what's going to be the best. This, I, I've never been so excited because we got to play with the things. And it, what's pack filler? Yeah. <laughs> Right. Like it was just like it was a whole new like approach to what the new wild meta could be like. And it, it just gave this different sort of hype for 
the expansion being released in wild standard they get this every time they get this theory craft stream right we got it for the first time hype all around how about you nate yeah i think the the big one for me is just that it, it was so incredible to be um invited in the first place like i it was just an, an absolute honor I, i'm still kind of floored that it happened in the first place like oh my goodness um and, and so just a big thank you to to the whole hearthstone team in particular um alkali was just in, incredible and and we really appreciate it It was so much fun and uh playing against um you know other big names and big friends you know we got to play against zeddy we got to play against wow hobbs we played against heart queen um you know we we did a you know and then it was really funny because this a bunch of the hearthstone devs were playing as well masquerading as as different folks and so we played against mm-hmm. matt we played against um you know a handful of other people that were uh that were playing there as well and um it, it was just super fun and so i will say that uh it was an absolute blast. I think my big takeaway is that like, I haven't been this hyped for an expansion in a long time and uh, I'm just really excited to play it. I want to do more theory crafting. Um, I, the one downside I will say is that, uh, because the, the course at announcement and all the cards were released, um, only two days, uh, like before the theory cream theory stream event just didn't, uh, leave a whole lot of time to like fully uh, hash out ideas because it was in the middle of the work week and um, but you know we, we have some time over the weekend and uh, but yeah no I'm just excited for it it was an absolute honor and um, you know it was it was it was crazy cool and I will say like that six hours yeah it, it went by so so fast and it just made me want to play it even more. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. I, I'm, I'm excited and it, it was super fun and I just want to play more. So anyways, yeah, thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you, Hearthstone friends. And thank you for all the bundles and stuff. Like I, I being able to, um, give away stuff to the community was, was also, I mean, it's just an honor. And so I, I, I don't know. I think it was, uh, just a phenomenal experience. And, um, yeah, I'm I'm still shocked. It's like a, you you see our picture like up on the website and like the twitters and like the stuff. It's like wait wait a minute, like I know those people. Wait a minute, that's us. <laughs> that was uh, so right. surreal. <laughs> and a big shout out also yeah to Clark Hellscream who had the like the most crazy combo of of the day. Uh, that that oh, we man. yeah we it was probably like 30, 30 turns in a row of. Um, Ooh, monsters behind you. Like over and over and over, and I think we went into like a, a bazillion damage of uh, fatigue there with like an infinite combo, oh, yeah. and I think we only stopped because we hit like the turn limit or whatever. Oh, was it? Yeah, auto concedes has a uh, twelve uh, one thousand two hundred fifty damage. Yeah, that sounds about right. Ouch. That was that was crazy. So, anyways, uh, what it a was time. more than two. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Um, yeah. All right. Well, that's that's kind of it for our main topic. Before we wrap up, we did have a uh, listener challenge from last week. Hi, do you want to tell us about that? Yeah. So in honor of the Sunken City expansion and Goliath the Dwarf coming on and doing his wonderful thing with all of his lore, we had our weekly challenge of how many Naga and Nazoth minions can you have on the board at the same time? You don't have to play them on the same turn, but they need to be on the board at the same time. They could be either on your side of the board, on their side of the board, or on both. And so what we do is we ask for a screenshot. And so we've got a couple screenshots here, but I think our winner here is uh, Alticon with the board completely full of golden not just regular but golden nazoths yeah this was crazy and i think it was it, it was not quite uh oh let me put the picture up on the screen here it was not quite i think what we had intended i mean the idea initially was like hey how many um you know va- variations of of like the nagas and and the nazoth minions can you play but like this is impressive uh this is quite impressive right here yeah 
Yeah, we also have them um, doing four. What is it? Is, is this Zola? Um, four yeah, on Zola one board, side, yeah. and then another six on the other side of the board. So that's ten Zolas. <laughs> So ten Zolas for one screenshot for Alticon, and then seven Nazoths. So either way, um, I don't even I, know how this happens. Like the the Zolas, I I could see, although how they get on the opponent's side of the board, I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> but um, but the Nazoths, even then, how do you play? How do you play seven Nazoths? Like you can, there's like some cube shenanigans and some. Uh, and and some stuff with like faceless maybe like I don't know I don't know um it it it's it's just crazy and so uh yeah I it, this was impressive um and uh yeah big 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 shout out for that and again it was while well, it was not what was um initially uh intended it was so impressive that like yep all right you get it so uh Ulticon, congratulations that is a lot of uh nizoths and that is a lot of zolas and so uh gg's there uh you will uh you you will get two packs on us awesome. uh so yeah i'll reach out via discord and uh we'll, we'll chat with you there so hey congrats i i love it thank you for participating in our weekly challenge so for this upcoming week, I want to dub this one play a shark do 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 play a shark do 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 <laughs> Because um as I hate that song oh so much, we had a lot of fun in this theory craft stream with Mecha Shark. Mecha Shark was so great. We were do to doing our entire way through the stream. <laughs> and so um, <laughs> Sheep has pitched the idea that uh, what we do is how many shark minions can you get on board? I suppose we could do both sides of the board just like we did with the last challenge. So most sharks and shark fin fans uh, <laughs> on the board. Anything that says shark. I will say board. I will say that my my preference uh my preference would always be like the the biggest variety of of shark minions like yes. it's it's cool like I love seeing you know seven copies of the same thing but like if you can play a spirit of the shark and a grawl the shark and a lone shark and a you know would and a bear shark and whatever else it is like all of the sharks yeah. Do, 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 do. <laughs> All the sharks. Do, do, so do, do, do. We, okay. I think we prioritize um, the the quality over quantity or what, whatever. Like we want different ones, right? So as many different varieties as we can get of the sharks. Does so, does Genzo count? <laughs> it says it's as long as it says shark. I think I think and yeah, if the Genzo word is, shark, the shark. Yeah. If if the word shark is there, I think. I'm good I with that. Good. I'm good with that. Yeah. Genzo the, the shark, dude. dude. <laughs> <laughs> so if you would like to participate, uh, these challenges can be played in casual and, or on ladder. Uh, you cannot play against a friend or the innkeeper. We know how that works because innkeeper will let you win. So, or, so will your friend. So we don't want to tank your rank. So play this if you if you want to in casual feel free if you go up the ladder and actually rank up with a shark deck good for you but we we recommend it in casual so what you're going to do is you're going to post your screenshot in our discord in the weekly challenges channel the winner will be announced on next week's show and will receive two hearthstone packs on us and be immortalized in the hall of fame on the born to be wild website nice all right. Yeah. And by the way, the website has uh, undergone quite a, a few updates. And so for those of you who um, have participated before or want to see what it looks like, yeah, head, head off to the website and uh, check it out. Um, we've got a bunch of past winners up there on our Hall of Fame and uh, you can check them out, see what the uh, past challenges were. And they've got screenshots so that you can see, you know, when, when somebody played a, you know, giant minion or a giant weapon or a crazy thing like they're there. And so um yeah you you can see them i think 
the, the thought was uh, initially, you know, we want to celebrate these accomplishments. And the more I thought about it, it was like, well, we want to see him too. You know, if the challenge is play the biggest weapon, like it's not that fun to just say, oh yeah, Schmoopy Daddy won. Like, nah, I want to see, I want to see like the 300 attack Kingsbane, like show me the screenshot. And so, uh, yeah. you know, they're up there on, on our website. So check it out. Born to be wild hs.com. You just click on the, um, the hall of fame, uh, link up at the, uh, it's at the top. So yeah, rock and roll. Um, interested to see how many sharks y'all can come up with that'll be that'll be super fun i think i'm gonna have to participate in this one as well just because uh it'll be fun nate the shark dude 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 dude, dude, dude. nate the shark dude 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 dude, 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 dude. (laughs) (laughs) oh i love it i love it all right friends well that is it for our show tonight Thank you all for joining us. Thank you very much to the folks who are here watching live uh, on Twitch. Thank you um, to all the folks who are uh, watching on YouTube or listening later on your podcast app. Um, One last shout out. Uh, We are doing, I know we just did a lore episode. Uh, We covered Nazoth. And I'm glad that everyone seems to like lore episodes because we're doing another one next week. Uh, Yeah. The timing is right. We always do these when there's a new expansion. Uh, typically the first week that the new expansion comes out, we'll do a lore episode for two reasons. Number one, it's super fun to know the story behind the cards before playing them. But number two, uh, because everything is so fresh and, and, and new that, uh, the meta hasn't settled that much yet. And so there's not really a ton to talk about aside from first impressions. And so it's, it's always like a great time to do a lore episode. Uh, and so we'll be joining back up with Goliath to cover the lore behind the sunken city. And so now we've seen kind of, you know, the origins of Nazoth and how Nazoth interacts with, um, you know, the Nagas and, and uh, uh, Queen Ashara and the sunken city. But like, we're going to dive into that even further. And so please join us again next week as we will talk about the lore behind the sunken city. All right. Well, that is it. That is it from us. Thank you for joining us. We will see you next week on another new episode of Born to be Wild. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Born to be wild. Do, 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 do. Why, sheep, why? Why have you done this to me? <laughs> <laughs>